paper that I gave you. Shall we say it together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The, the sheet of paper that I gave you, and I just want to talk about the first question that I have there. Um, many people are much more comfortable talking about God than Jesus. Why do you think so? Many, you know, if you have a conversation, um, I used to, <coughs> living in, back in uh, Philly, I, uh, I used to go in the uh, morning services, after the morning service was over, this was before we I came to Grace, I was part of, I, when I was a, a pastoral intern in an Episcopal church, and after the Episcopal church, uh, the pastor and I would go to a geriatric facility in downtown. So when I go there, and uh, when, I, when I read the Old Testament portion, they were all okay with that. But when it came to the New Testament, when I read the Gospels, there's a lot of people who will not like me. Uh, this, was, uh, this was not a Christian institution. This was just a regular place. And so when I read the Old, they were okay with that. But when I came to the New and I read the Gospel, they would kind of get offended by it. Uh, I'll come back to asking the question, why are they so offended by it? So that's my first question. The question is, if, try talking about God in your conversation. Uh, remember the first, uh, last week we talked about uh, God the Father, isn't it? That's the, the broad general idea of God the Father. And we talked about God as Almighty, God as Creator of heaven and earth. Right? So this God who is generic God. It can be anybody's God. Is that right? You can be a, a Muslim or a Hindu or whatever it is, God. And if I say God, Come they're okay with that. So the generic God is okay. But when it comes to when I say the name of Jesus, is when conversation gets very sour. Why is that? You're going to help me out. I'm just going to write. If when you say something, I'm just going to write. Because this is, yeah, this is a discussion. I'm just not... Uh, People not don't believe that Jesus is enough God. Uncle? People don't believe that Jesus is yeah, son. Yeah, they don't believe that Jesus is son. <clears throat> when you talk about God, it's inclusive of all religions, right? The okay. moment you say Jesus... It becomes exclusive? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it becomes exclusive, okay. <clears throat> People can't uh, uh, get the concept, concept of the Trinity. Okay. <clears throat> the difficulty is with the Trinity. They don't believe in resurrection. They don't believe in resurrection. Oh, okay. Yeah. They don't believe in resurrection. They expected Jesus as a mighty king. Yeah, yeah. They only uh, talk about him as a... Okay, mighty king. Jesus as man is okay. But Jesus as God is difficult. Okay. Others, you know, just pitch in. This is, as I said, this is not about me talking and you are sitting down and listening to all of that stuff. Uh, but I want you to, just because this is, this is part of what we are doing here, is it? We are engaging a subject uh, that is pretty dry. If you sit down there and let me talk, it becomes dry. But then you ask me questions and then we engage in a conversation. Then it becomes very interesting because it's a very interesting topic, which is the creed. Last week we had a great conversation. We had a great conversation on our small groups. We talked a lot about, you know, what does it mean about God? Mm -hmm. What does this mean about God? So the generic God is very easy to figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's easy, but when it comes to Jesus, uh, yeah, why, why do you think, uh, yeah, go ahead. Because when you say God and especially in the geriatric facility, you, you sound like you are helping them. But then when you talk of Jesus, it seems like you are trying to convert them. It has oh, been wow. used so much in vain oh, wow. for fundraising for so many purposes. 
convert as, as, as supposed to help, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. I think the very concept of bloodshed required to sanctify you, yeah. people can't understand that. Yeah. Like why should there be a bloodshed for you to become pure? Or, you know, so when you talk about <coughs> Jesus, he died on the cross, and that's the base of your faith, and people can't understand that. Yeah. God, God is someone who is supposed to be really holy, and people think that you have to be holy to reach God. So God should be this completely the other. Right. So many seek holiness to reach God. Yeah. But not really. Yeah, seek they God. seek holiness to reach God. Okay. Oh, okay. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. On the same uh, line of thoughts, when he says he accepts sinners, those who. So that is simple. Yeah. Yeah, those who. Think they are righteous, they have a problem. <coughs> oh, okay. Sometimes uh, Jesus was so contrary to the law, so it was very hard for people to understand whether he's come to establish it or he's come to really stand against it. Okay, so when, uh, okay. Jesus opposed to it, so can you say, okay? Okay. Okay, anything else? Often, anything else? Often times when people say talk about Jesus, they're, they're very self-righteous. Right? Oh, wow. and, and that puts off other people and they say, I don't want to hear it. Oh, self-righteous. So then it becomes okay. Party, yeah. Jesus questioned um, the very foundation of society, the culture. Oh, wow, okay. Tradition. And so it was very hard for people to accept right. the change. All right. <coughs> good, good. Young people. Folks, uh, uh, yeah, Jeffrey, uh, go ahead, Raj. Some people don't believe that they need saved. Oh, they don't, yeah, they don't think they need to be saved, okay. Wow, okay. All right. Yeah, others. Uh, they don't believe in immaculate yeah. conception. They don't believe in immaculate conception. Okay. Bobby is going another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, very interesting. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Okay. Mainly, I think that in the secular world, we talk about God, uh, it's very common. It's, uh, it's generic. Yeah. But uh, it's more of a look, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, it's like, don't take it serious. But when you talk about Jesus, then you become serious about it. Specific, specifically, you're talking about a particular. Yeah, so the, the particularity of this God is is something that throws us off. Now you and I will differ. But you, you are a Hindu, then I'm a. You will say, you know what, I believe in Jesus. Yeah. You say I believe in somebody else. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ma. Yeah. Sorry, I think this kind of ties into what Sasanko was saying. But like, when people hear like Christianity, they automatically kind of hate us because of like things like transgenderism and gay and things like that. Oh, like, okay. They automatically associate with like Asian. Okay. Yeah, our stance on uh, all the... Okay. Augustine, I'm sorry. Yeah. Our stand against all of those things, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Augustine, you're saying something. Yeah. You know, some uh, strongly believe that he's a prophet. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they, they believe he's a prophet. That's true. Muslims. Because most of them think that uh, all roads lead to the same thing, yeah. but only Jesus says, I am the only Yeah, that's Jesus. true. That's true. Uh, remember the example that I gave you about uh, uh, going to this geriatric facility, is that right? <clears throat> the geriatric facility had, most of them were uh, were Jewish. That's right. Yeah, most of them were Jewish. And so when I spoke about God of the Old Testament, they were uh, okay with me. They were really okay because I only talked about the God of the Old Testament. They were able to recognize, they were able to identify this God of the Old Testament. Suddenly, I, when I talk, when I go to the Gospels and I read the Gospels, immediately they'll get offended by it because of their history. Right? There is so much history that's gone behind. And plus, uh, their, their way of looking at Jesus as the Messiah. It's a completely different way of their looking at Jesus as the Messiah. So they, they will get super offended by it. So, yeah, um, go ahead, Ma. I don't know if this was mentioned before, but I feel like it's easier to... People won't say anything about the Old Testament because it's more about it's more by law. But Jesus is by grace. Grace. Like, that's a yeah, we use that. Okay, people. somewhere we said law and grace. Yeah, okay. that's true. That's true. So, um, what... The, see, today we want to talk about this Jesus. 
the particularity of this Jesus. Right? Uh, God in generic is okay. But when God who came to us in Jesus, then it's not okay. But that's what is central to our faith, isn't it? You and I are sitting down here because that is what is so central to the Christian faith. And so we now we can go back to this, uh, uh, this uh, creed that we have. Because if you look at the center portion of your creed, then almost uh, the, the majority of the creed talks about Jesus. Right? So we're going to look at the I uh, look at your note uh, the notes that I gave you. We'll go through it uh, one by one, and then you can stop me here and there and ask me questions. <coughs> uh, if you if you look at how the creed is formed, if you look at how the creed is framed, uh, last week when we talked about God in generic ones, we talked about God the Creator, isn't it? Right. So the middle portion when we move from God as Creator and when we come to Jesus. We are talking about Jesus not as creator, but more up, more like God, the redeemer. Right? And then if you see, so it's creation, redemption, and at the last part of it, it's what will happen to our lives at the very end. So it's consummation. So if you split the whole creed to look at it, so it's creation, redemption, and, and consummation. So, but I, I just wanted to uh, touch a few things here and there. The center portion of your uh, the paper that I gave you, I have one, two, three, four numbers, right? I'm going to stop here and there. Uh, first it says, I believe in Jesus Christ. And then it says, His only Son and our Lord. So we're going to stop here and there and ask this question. Uh, I believe in Jesus Christ, it says, right? And now, Jesus is the name that was given. And Christ is not His last name. So that's not Jesus' last name. If you think that was... So Christos basically means the chosen one, the one who came to redeem, the Messiah, right? So uh, I made some notations for you. Christ as the anointed one, right? Anybody who claimed as the Messiah was always anointed, right? Can we think of examples? John, 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 John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Okay. No, go to go to the Old Testament. Samuel. 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 Right. Samuel anoints who? David. 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 Samuel anoints who? Saul. Saul. Yeah. Right. Samuel anoints Solomon. All of those kings. Right. So it's not only Old Testament thing. It, it's so when we come to the New Testament and later on, even as recent as when Queen Elizabeth became the queen. Right. The Archbishop of Canterbury would take an oil and would anoint the hand of the Queen Elizabeth, right? Would anoint the head of Queen Elizabeth and would anoint this portion, the heart of the Queen Elizabeth. Because if you know, kings are supposed to rule justly with their hands, with their minds, and with their heart. Make sense? So, when, when he says, it says, it says, uh, Jesus Christ, it says, so Christ basically means Messiah, the anointed one, right? We saw examples. So that's what they were saying. But they were saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus to be God's Messiah. Let's keep going. And the next one he says, his only son. Why was that so important? Remember, see, the, the, what we are doing now is we are going through the creed. And we are asking the question, everything that appears was for a particular purpose. I don't think they were just randomly thinking of it. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't think they just randomly put things. Today, even today, when you, when you see how people write stories, how they use illustrations, they just don't randomly put illustrations. They put illustrations that are very meaningful, isn't it? The only things that they wanted, they would put it. So that's what we are saying. So the next one, it says, son. Why is this uh, uh, super important? Why was this important? Remember last week I told you that the, re the two major reasons for the creed to happen is, can you think of, can, we, can you re remember why, why, what are the two reasons that is I told you? Why was the creed important? Yeah, only one week. <laughs> why was the creed important? Yeah. Because, uh, in those days, there were a lot of other things happening. Very good. So, heresies, right? <laughs> right, heresies were there. So, people came up with brilliant ideas. 
So, to calm them down, you needed a creed. If somebody is going to come and tell me who Jesus is, then hey, they'll ask you, hey, what do you believe? Then you should be able to say, isn't it? So that's why they said, okay, let's creed. So the second one was, if you are somebody who is getting ready for baptism, like my young people who got ready for confirmation, I went through the creed with them, isn't it? So the two things, one is to build the church and the other one is to defend the church from every other false teaching that's appearing, okay? So, why was this important to say that Jesus is God's only son? Why was it important to say? There's no one else other than... There's no one else other than Jesus. Was there somebody practicing some other... Uh... Good! Very good! Yeah, there was somebody who was practicing something else Right, there was a there was a um, a Christian named uh, uh, Arian. If you go and check on uh, Arianism, if you get a chance, uh, click in and see Arianism. Now, he, what he came up with the idea was there was what is called Homo Ousius and Homo Ousius. Now, what Arian thought was Jesus is of the the same substance as God, but he was little less than God. If somebody says that to you, what would you say? No. He's equal. All three are one. Yeah, so you wouldn't say, ah, Jesus is, yeah, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. It doesn't work that way. Does it make sense? So, to say that he was from, that's why when you go to the, at least this, if you think this way, Go to the Nicene Creed. It will say he is begotten of the Father as the same substance of the Father. Because he wanted to tell everybody who thinks that Jesus was little less than the Father. They said, no, no, no. Jesus is as equally important as the Father. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What else could be the reason? Sacrifice. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah? I'm sorry. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Sure. Okay. But what else could be the reason? I'm going to just ask you. To have the faith. I mean, Maybe at that faith. time. Sorry. Yeah. To have faith, I mean, to have proper faith for the newcomers. I mean, okay, to have, have proper. But why does he want to say, you know, he was God's son? His only son, it says, right? Yeah, go ahead, Ma. Um, I guess one thing could be, like, in case there were other false messiahs. So false like, messiahs, okay. Um, also, it's like, it's important that he's God's son to so okay. understand the sacrifice. Good. Last week, last week we saw God as father, isn't it? And what did we come up with? What did, what did we arrive at when we said God as Father? Why does he not? Father, children. I, when I, when uncle, son. Children. Children. What does it mean? In his image. Intimacy, isn't it? Isn't it? So it's not only God was just a substance of the Father, but he had a relationship. Right? Why do I call my son my son? It's because it's my own flesh and blood, isn't it? Does it make sense? So, when you are saying God, when he says Jesus was his only son, he wanted to tell everybody, hey, listen, this God that came to us was nobody else other than the Father's own, own begotten one. Okay? Let's keep going. <clears throat> because I marked, and it says, then our Lord. Right? It says, they say, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Now, the word that is used is kurios. Right? Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, read for me Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Okay, God, he's asking, he, Moses wanted to know God's name. Because in, in that time, to know somebody's name is to know them personally, right? Is to, you know, some ways they can have a control over this God. So Moses also wanted to know, what is your name? Because when I'm going to Pharaoh, they will ask me, what is the name of your God? Because every small guard during that time had a name. If you are a guard who, if you are somebody going through infertility, you go to God Baal. He will, he will set it right for you. So, you want to know the name of this God. But then when God reveals who God is, He says, I am that I am, isn't it? What does it mean? 
It's that word Yahweh. What does it mean? I am that I am. No beginning, no end. Very good. No beginning, no end. Was, is, and will be. So, folks, you... Self-existent. Self-existent. You don't, they don't, it doesn't need to be, right? There's nothing. Or for example, in French, if you've done French, is anybody here French? Prita, did you do French? Who, who did French? Did French? The word etre, E-T-R-E. To be. If you conjugate to be, it says I am, you are, he, she is, right? That's what it is. I am. I existed before, I am now, and I am will be. Right, so when, when, God, when he says, so when the name of God was given to them, they could not pronounce it. So they said, okay, the, the easier one is to go with the name Adonai. There are several places that you will find it. But when it came to the Greek, it became curious. It became lard. I don't know if you joined uh, the first of the month uh, service. If uh, uh, Peter is on the boat, is that right? Jesus teaches from the boat and they have an amazing catch of fish. And then Jesus, then uh, Peter falls at the feet of Jesus and he says, Go away from me, Lord, he says. Because at this point, he's just not realizing Jesus as another master, as another teacher, but he realized that this is Lord God. God. Because I told him that sermon, he said, you know, usually they don't go to fa catch fish in the afternoon. Because by the time Jesus must have finished his talk, it would have been afternoon. Fishes don't come to the surface of the afternoon. And when he catches and the nets begin to break, Peter begins to realize that this Jesus is God of all creation. <coughs> He's told the fishes to come to this net and it all gets cut. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you, he moves from, first he'll, he'll say, when, when Jesus asks him, can you put this boat? He'll say, master, I will do this for you. That's a regular slave-master relationship. But when he, when he begins to see, when he experiences this amazing miracle, he doesn't call him master anymore. He falls at Jesus' feet and says, Curious, you are Lord. There is nobody else like you. Last week also in the sermon, right? The woman touches Jesus' garment comes and falls, fear and trembling, calls him Lord. Is that right? That's what it is. That's what when it says curious. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> because in the, in, the, in the expression of Lord, in the Jewish understanding, uh, somebody who is an authority, that's all it means. Like uh, in, the, in the Jewish home, the husband was always the head of the home. Is that right? The husband was always the head of the home. So in the home, the husband is the curious. When you go to a city, who can be the couriers? Or in a township? Mayor. The, mayor. the mayor. Right? When you go to a, a bigger uh, an empire, who will be there? The king. The king. Now when he says that you are large, he's not talking about small, he's not talking about family, he's not talking about city, he's not talking about... He's talking about God of all of creation. Make sense? Let's keep going. Uh, all right. Uh, and then was, uh, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, why is this important? Why does he want to say that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit? Now the next question, think about the next question. It says, what is lost if the phrase is missing from the Apostles' Creed? Then you can't think about Jesus as the Holy One. Good. So you cannot think of Jesus as a holy one, when it says he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, you cannot think of, you have to think of, what did he say, say it again? As a holy he person. won't be a holy person. He, so he won't be a holy God. like a normal conception. Okay, what else, what else can be? He's talking about, he says, and he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, is that right? He's you from God. Oh, he's right. from God. But somebody else was saying something, yeah. Also the prophet, whatever was said in the Old Testament is being fulfilled. Fulfilled, so he's prophet, he's a, yeah, he's a prophecy fulfilled, is that right? Mm -hmm. Not prophet. Anybody else, anybody else? It will not be a natural birth. It won't be a natural birth. 
or it won't be a supernatural process. He would be from uh, Adam who is a fallen. Okay. So he wanted to say that he was, uh, he was not that. Yeah. Okay. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, yeah, essentially like when we're born, we're born with sin. But since he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Jesus was born blameless. So Jesus was born? Blameless. Blameless, okay. All right. Okay. So if that phrase was missing, he's just another man. He's not another man. Or to put it another way, let me put it another way. If that phrase was missing, then we deny Jesus is deity. Deity, divinity. Does it make sense? If he was just saying, so, so when you talk about Jesus, there are two things that were very important. One is divinity. So if we had not said he was not considered the Holy Spirit, hey listen, he's just another guy. Who cares about him? So you will if, if that phrase was missing from the Apostles' Creed, then divinity is in question. Make sense? Alright. Go to the next. Yeah. Somebody. Trinity. Trinity is, uh, will be missed, right? Yeah, Trinity Father, will be missed. And the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. So <laughs> divinity will be missed. See, all, all other religions, it's a human being that has started. Like you take uh, Islam. Muhammad was a prophet. He's not God, good. Right? Yeah. But this is he is of God. He Very is good. God. That's the that's the difference. Alright. Go to the next one. And it, then the next one it says, He was born of the Virgin Mary, isn't it? <coughs> Why was that important? Humanity aspect. So, he's, he's, the first thing he wants to do is that Jesus is divine. The next one he wants to say to us that Jesus is human. human. Because there was a guy, there was a movement during that time called Docetism. Now, the Docetists basically thought that, you know, Jesus was not human. Jesus was not human, Jesus was okay, you know, because, and again, it was docetism and ag agnosticism, basically said, flesh is bad, spirit is good, be human. Jesus just seemed like a human. But for the Christian faith, your faith and for my faith, what is so important is that Jesus is both divine as well as human, human isn't it? And he was just not a little bit here and there. He was fully human. And he was fully divine. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> now, the next question, look at the next question that I asked you. It says, what is lost if this phrase is missing? This is a very important question we need to talk about a little bit. Is belief in this doctrine that the virgin birth crucial to one to be a Christian? Mm -hmm. Think about it. <clears throat> is it important for somebody to... If they don't believe that uh, they are no Christians? But also it was foretold. Right? It was foretold. That's what the prophecy fulfilled. Okay. Prophecy fulfilled. But think about it. If the virgin birth, that's what it says, right? Uh, if this, if the belief in this draft in that the virgin birth, is it crucial for one, one to be a Christian? Because you, have, you without that you are not you don't acknowledge that God is divine and human, right? Okay, so it's very important, isn't it? Yeah. Something supernatural. Something supernatural. Fake. Yeah, and something that tells you that that it's just not anybody who became human, but it was God who became human. Right? That's totally unique. Is that right? <clears throat> so it, it is very important. I mean, if you're Christian. Uh the born again experience is in a way like the boy, the Holy Spirit. Sure. So there's the physical birth, and there's the, I mean, a, a spiritual birth, and there's the born again is a, you're born again. Uh, okay. You know, spirit. So you you need both of them. Okay. The next question that I asked is. Um, wait, wait. Yeah. But even in Hinduism, other aren't there other gods like that? Who became incarnate? Like, no, but I'm getting confused, aren't they? Like, Peter was human, divine and human? No, no, I don't think so. Who? Okay. 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 No, he was born, but he was born of virgin Buddha. Buddha, that's what Buddha is. Buddha is human, and then also he... He's just a king, he just... Brahma, no? Krishna, right? 
What is drama? Drama is okay. the creator. Okay. We'll keep, hang on to that question. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Jeffrey, and then we'll keep going. Yeah. So, did the criminal at the cross believe in the virgin birth? No, that's... Uh, I wow. Does, like, what, what, still great made? question is, uh, he's the criminal at the cross. Like the criminal at the cross, did he believe of the virgin birth? He believed in Jesus. That's all he needed to at that point. He didn't know it. He didn't know it at all. At all, yeah. So you don't need it to be a Christian, right? Like you don't need it to become a Christian, but you need it to like live a Christian life. But that was pre. Like I, I, we now know the history of Christ. Right? I don't think you can take parts of our faith and say. Yeah. But like, you, like, what if someone's on their deathbed? You don't have time to explain. Right. You don't just, years of history. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Just fine. We just, but if he accepts Christ as his Good question, system. Jeffrey. Good question. Think about it. Think about it. Let's let's keep going for that. Yeah, that's a very good question. Think about it. Uh, let's keep going. Um, uh, before we go there also, you know, um, what do you think about Jesus? Which one works better for you? The divinity or the humanity? A mix both. of both. Mix both. Of both. A mix of both? Depending on the situation that you are in. <coughs> Say more. Mm -hmm. Say more, more about that. <laughs> I think the humanity aspect. For some, uh, so, uh, where, where, where would you like to see Jesus human? And where would you see like to see Jesus human, divine? See, when I'm hurting, I would, I would say, I would ask Jesus to feel like I feel. That's when I'll see him as human, and as well as at the same time I'll see him as divine. Okay. Ask him to heal. So. Okay. I would say divinity is. Uh, uh, it should be uh, given more preference because there are a lot of good people in the world. They acted more like Jesus and they acts loving and Did you hear what he said? He said there are more good people, there are a lot of good people in the world. Right? So for Augustine, it's not so much the humanity of Jesus that's important for him. It's the divinity of Jesus. I think his daily life will be human. But when you come to ch uh, a church or somewhere, then you worship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, folks, some of you, some of you are not talking. To you. I'm just gonna call your names. Call your names. Don't, don't be offended. But I feel, I feel yeah. humanity is important because if he is sent in this to this earth to just die for our, our sins, he could have just lived one day and died for our sins. Why he has to live 33 years? I think that is something bad for us to look at him and follow him. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Man, go through the pain. Uh, go through yeah. the pain as a human. The, the thing I say, right? Jesus, uh, the only reason he came is not to show his uh, kind nature or something, just to show the sacrifice. Okay. Just to show sacrifice. Okay. All right. Yeah. He, he went through everything we are going through. Okay. Right. He, he through every temptation. So All right. Not like he just. Uh, good, very good, very good. Ethi, I'm going to call you. Ethi, I'm going to call you because I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm being very serious because because the thing is I'm not trying to put you in a spot, but I want to ask some things like I, again, you know, uh, this is what I, I do best, and I want to do it. I will call names. I want to hear from you because for you, what is it? What part of this Jesus uh, makes sense for you? Is this the divinity side of Jesus or the humanity side of Jesus, and why? The humanity. Why think? No, seriously, why does that humanity side of uh, Jesus uh, kind of uh, appealing to you? Basically, it's something like you, know, you don't see, it, you just believe. Humanity is something that you can see. Wow. Humanity is something that you can see. Divinity is something that you cannot see. I think see and relate. So one, you can connect with people. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can yeah like you know, not uh, like that is more about with God. Oh, good. Okay. <coughs> All right. All right. Shobha. Both, both. both for you. Yeah. Both for you. Okay. Okay. Veena, do you have a thought? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm scared. If you are thoughts, he goes for talking. But <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, yeah. See, if you see uh, deeply, he is uh, only two th two people God created. One was Adam, who lost everything. Then Jesus, who got everything, and both of them are uh, humans. Okay. Well, All right. Now what? Yeah. No, no, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Yeah. I didn't hear it. No, what, what he says was uh, only two people God created. 
Messiah. One was Adam and the other one was Jesus. Jesus right. So the humanity is as important as... Uh, what he says is so humanity is as important as divinity. No, uh, whatever uh, first human he created, he lost everything, he came to... He restored redeem. everything in the next yes. second human. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, somebody can never... No, uh, for a Christian, the basic core principle is based on divinity, I think. Because divinity or supernatural uh, happenings, like uh, the virgin birth, okay. the resurrection, they are all things which will be difficult to understand. Okay. But that's what makes the focus case if he believes in that. Okay. Good, okay. Very good. I think the, the human part provides the sacrificial lamb. After that, you know, you don't need to follow the laws. Okay. <coughs> right. Oh, all right. That's, that's the... That's all right. I'm meaning at that. If you can... Well, the human part is a sacrificial lamb, you know, where there's a shed blood, died, and You don't have to actually do all the laws that you have to do in the Old Testament. That's part of the reason why he thinks. Okay? Shall we keep going? We're making good progress. That's good. Uh, so can, so the next one he says, uh, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, right? If somebody has the Bible, uh, Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5. Somebody can read that. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet he was wounded and stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Okay, so... Um Again, it's a prophecy that gets fulfilled in Jesus, isn't it? If you, if you, if you look at uh, Isaiah 53, he's talking about a suffering servant. A servant who, will, who had no farm, who had no nature, he was all... Right? And so he's, he's talking about a prophecy that gets fulfilled. So he's talking about a suffering. That's so what Jesus suffered and died. But then he says, you know, there is no mention of uh, Peter. There is no mention of Judas. There is no mention of anybody else. No Christian character gets... Uh, Mentioned in the creed, why Pontius Pilate? Poor Pontius. Poor Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Poor Pontius Pilate. But why Pontius Pilate? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we we say these creeds, but we don't think he, about it, isn't it? Yeah. He submitted to the law. Very good. He submitted to the law. Is yeah, that right? He could, have, he could have said, "I'm God. I don't have to submit to all of you." But he did that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, if somebody has a Bible, uh, look at uh, Luke chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Read that for me. It's a Christmas story, but read that two verses for me. Chapter, uh, chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Yeah, think about it. You know, why does, why does uh, Luke have to include all these people? Right? He includes the governor, he includes the... Why does he have to include? Because it's history. Yeah, history the Jesus that you and I believe is just not somebody who came up... He showed in this world at a particular time historical and, time. Time and space. Time and space. He wanted to show that because a lot of people thought that Jesus was not somebody who was in history. So he wanted to locate Jesus. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. Look at Jesus in history. Very important. For us it may not be, but for that group of people who were struggling to believe in this Jesus, he wanted to show that this Jesus was a historical figure. Very important. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, was crucified, died, and was buried. <clears throat> Why so much of details for Jesus? It says, right? It says was uh, was crucified, right? Was crucified and uh, was crucified, died and was buried. Why so much? Detail? Because only a human can die. So he went through the suffering or death just like any other human. Good. He was human. Remember, I told you earlier, the Docetists did not believe that Jesus was human. Right? Only human can suffer, can be crucified. It was not God. <coughs> so, you know, he's still struggling with this idea of a God who's both divine and human. 
And so he wanted to show that this Jesus who came to us was human like you, you and me. He, was, was it the culture of Jewish people? Of the culture of Jewish people? Say more. Crucifixion. No, it was not the Roman, culture of the Jews. Roman, 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 uh, Roman punishment. Roman. Yeah. Roman. 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 No, burial is a uh, Jewish tradition. Very true. Burial, that is all uh, part of the Jewish uh, tradition. You are right. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, <coughs> but crucifixion so is crucifixion. Being, being a Jew. Yeah. So they, they want to insist that he, he is a Jew. So go through the culture. He went through all those cultures. So he was bound to culture? He probably. Probably bound to culture. So he had to do all of that. And but, also to yeah. show that he was blameless and he took the punishment for us. Oh, good. And in the past, uh, a blemishless lamb was supposed to be sacrificed. Sure, sure okay. For... All right. But that's very good. Yeah. yeah. Like this is setting uh, in stone for the next step because that's important, right? Resurrection without death. Did you hear that? Mm. Right. Because <laughs> the reason why that is important is, that, let me tell you why. Because when Jesus was put in the tomb, and everybody thought uh, Jesus didn't really die. He kind of went into a coma kind of a stuff and got resuscitated. It was not resuscitation. You and I don't believe in resuscitated God. You and I believe in a resurrected God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah, it's not like Jesus went, uh, had a faint and then somebody woke him up and no, 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 died. How did they even come up with that? Because, you know, the spear pierced him. No, a lot of people believe yeah. that, like... A lot of people have a theory that Jesus never died. He just they went to sleep him for in the tomb and they brought him, they moved. When we were in, uh, when uh, we were in, uh, I, this was a long time ago, there was a new newspaper article that appeared in India. Uh, I don't know if you have ever watched, uh, read that. It says, uh, Jesus, after he had died, they found him in Kashmir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And him alive, because, right? because they thought that Jesus had, but they put him in a tomb. Somehow they, he woke up that night and he walked away and came all the way to Kashmir. The disciples did that, right? Just it's, to create the... <coughs> so it's, they really believed that Jesus had like a faint and then he came up. Right? So he wanted to make very clear. Number one, he wanted to tell that this Jesus who came to be with us was human. Number one, if he was not human, then he could not have died. Right? And then he, he, he frames what is going to happen next. Because he says, only if somebody had died, then that person can get resurrected. Make sense? Mm -hmm. My question now is, nobody saw resurrection, isn't it? Nobody saw resurrection. Yeah, no, who saw? Nobody saw. Nobody saw. Right? Nobody saw resurrection. But it's so central to the Christian faith. Like somebody said, it's like a three-legged stool. If you take away the third leg as resurrection out, stool will fall. Yeah, but why is resurrection so important? You can't believe in a dead God. You cannot yeah. believe in a dead God. There should be life. Okay, there and should be uh, life. So we believe in dying and getting rising up again okay. along with him. So. All right. Yeah. Again, think about it. He's talking so, about a God who got resurrected. And the, Yeah, in go the, ahead. In the oldest tradition, when the high priest goes into the temple to pay for our sins, he has to come back alive. That's when our uh, remission has been accepted. Okay. So if Jesus hadn't come back, come back, then our sins are not forgiven. That's it. He Isn't talked, it? You talked about the divinity, right? Yeah. So the, if you just say he died, that's human. So he, so he resurrected, then comes the divinity. Divinity. Very good. So think about it. Now see, all of those, each phrases that you have in the Apostles' Creed are so full of meaning. We sometimes just read it and just go away. But there is so much that these people have put through this, right? So talking about Jesus' resurrection, so important, so key. Like nobody, nobody, this one, but then Jesus appears to them for 40 days, isn't it? For 40 days after he got resurrected, he appears to people everywhere. And at some point of time, he even told people to put their hands, is that right? Because he wanted to show that this body that he came up is not a ghost. Very important. Because they wanted, everybody thought this was, Jesus was a ghost. But he said, no, 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 I'm not a ghost. Just touch me and see. 
right? This Jesus who died rose up again. And I think that is central to our Christian faith. Yeah, it's not so much, you know, you, we can talk about all the other pieces to the doctrine, but you know, this is so central to the Christian faith. How do I know? He lives in my heart. How do I know? He lives in this world. How do I know? He is here. Because the promise of scripture is what? Where two or three are gathered in my name, then am I. Because the God that you and I worship is a promise keeping God. A God who says I will be there, He will be there. God is here. How do I know? Because the resurrected one is here. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Alright, he was... Uh, and then he says he descended to the dead. This is the this is the big piece that all of them talk about, you know, why did Jesus have to go there? Where is this dead place? And all of that. Uh, in the Jewish thought, <coughs> in the Jewish thought, under the earth uh, was was another realm. Hades. Right? Hades, one side, and there was, uh, that is Gehenna and Hades on one side, and there was on the other side was paradise. paradise. Right? Remember the... Jesus tells uh, the guy who, right, what does he say to him? He will be in paradise. He will be with me in paradise. Right? The paradise is that place. That place, what everybody thought of was before they got, everybody rose up and they got judged, that's the place that they were in. And so it was believed that Jesus went to that place and he preached. Right? So, and the idea is that when Jesus comes back again, all of these people will raise up and that's when the judgment will happen and that's when everything will get divided and some will go to, to be with God and the others will go to be in the hell. So that's why it says, and he descended to the dead. Right? And then he says, on the third day he rose again. Right? Very important, on the third day he rose again. We talked about it already. And then he said, he ascended into heaven. No. So I have a question. So sure. You're, you're trying to say like, you know, he descended to death because, so he went there to see the dead people. He, you're trying to say that he preached to the dead people. Sure. At least that's what the, at least uh, from the Jewish thought, that's what it is all about. People whose souls were still in that place. So is paradise on the dead place or not? If you Are if you safe? have if you have died in the Lord, you will go to paradise. If you did not die in the Lord, you will go to what was called the Gehenna. Area. Which one? Staging area. The staging area. Which <laughs> <laughs> is true. Thank you, Augustine. That was a nice uh, analogy. Staging area. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when the beggar died, rumor he went to heaven. Very and good. He begs. Uh, That's the same place. Yeah, to so say, the, oh, yeah. please go and save my That's the same family. place. That's it. Right. That's the same place. So the question is the thief. Who yeah. died with the Christ. Yeah. Is he in the staging area or in the paradise? No, but I, at least... Uh, paradise, I, I, paradise, I, paradise, paradise, <laughs> paradise is the staging area. Is the staging staging area. <laughs> so, uh, so why Jesus said, you know, like, yeah, you will be uh, in paradise with me. Yeah. Because right? he was there, right? So uh, he left him and then he went to heaven? Heaven is not the paradise. No, I'm talking about Jesus. You just told me it was a staging area. Yeah. I know, yeah. but... You will be in paradise with me. Yeah. Right? That uh, statement he said, yeah. right, on the cross. So, the thief is still in the stage here, is that right? Yeah. Heaven and the right, 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 right. I'm talking correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The spouse thing. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. So, so when will we no, my, my understanding was like yeah. the paradise is uh, heaven. heaven. Okay. So the thief is already in heaven. Yeah. We don't know. Then let's leave that to God. Let, let, let God make that decision. We are going, we are jumping no, through heaven. because like we go to LOJ, right? Our pastor keeps insisting like when you die, you cannot go to God. You cannot see God because you have to rise up again when Jesus comes in the second time. All right. So no one can actually see God. That's um, so that's a staging area. They really <laughs> emphasizes. So it, he was asking once, and why Jesus said Lazarus was with Lazarus, him. Lazarus, the thief. Yeah. Oh, the thief was with him in paradise. Okay. <laughs> so even during the funeral today, yeah, Franklin <laughs> was telling that his father is already met Jesus. I don't believe that. Okay. Because the paradise is a place in between heaven and. Uh, 
where we are. Yeah. They are all in the suspended animation. Yeah. So only when the Christ will come, but the next question will arise, yeah. where is Moses? Where is Elijah? Yeah. Where are they? Yeah. I cannot answer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because actually Moses and Elijah were people who walked with God. Yeah, where are they? They did, not, they, they did not die at all. Yeah, where are they? So, we don't know. Uh-huh. Good question, but we don't know. Yeah. See, we, as little children, we were always taught one ponnangi, one went kridam, uh, vatiyam. Yeah. So, we're male reader. We're male reader. So, we, we're not even a... Uh, uh, so, we're just going to paradise. Yeah. So, we're only going to go heaven later. Yeah. 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 You can't go to heaven. No. You don't need to. People say that when it comes to God, he says, okay. Jesus. Yeah, hang on to your questions. Yeah, okay. Are you saying that Elijah went straight to heaven? Because it, because, it's, because in scripture it says he walked with God, isn't it? Right. He did not even die. There are only yeah, two no, people. The, basically, there are three people who never yeah. faced death. It was uh, Enoch. Elijah and Moses. Moses. Moses actually died. No, because died we don't know. God, 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 God buried him. God buried Moses. Abraham died. Abraham died. Abraham died. Abraham died. No, so, but yeah. Moses was buried by yeah. God. God. Yeah. That's, that's the scripture so says. That is the, that is the for expression as in Enoch walked with God. Ah, no, no. So they skipped. Ah. Not is it same? Because How at least that, that's what the, that's no, the understanding of some of the scholars. Because yeah. Yeah. Elijah was seen going in the chariot. chariot. So that means he had left the left earth. Earth. That's it. But uh, whereas Moses was concerned, he was buried. Yeah. He bar- God seems to be buried. Okay. So, All right. Keep uh, hanging. All right. Hang on to those questions. We'll keep moving. Because I have to still do your group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Where does it say again? <laughs> Yeah. On the third day, he oh, rose again. Third day, he rose again. again. Where does he say again? Yeah, great question though. <laughs> Seriously, great question. I'll check on it. Spelling mistake. Seriously, great question. Rose again. <laughs> he rose again, right? Why again? He rose multiple times. <laughs> no, good question, Lama. Hang on to that. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, hang on to that because I, I really don't have an answer, but I, I, will, I will come back to you. Okay. And then let's so he said he ascended into heaven. Is that right? We talked about Jesus' life, Jesus' death, Jesus' burial and all of that. We talked about resurrection. You know, if you, if you go into scripture, there is very less said about Jesus' ascension. Right? Very less that is told about Jesus' ascension. If you go to the very end of Luke, if somebody have your Bible, look at the Luke 24 verses 50 to 33. <laughs> and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Okay. Talks about ascension, right? Literally, Jesus going up. That's what it basically says. Jesus went up to heaven. Not much was said anything about Jesus. Uh, why was that so important and to, to put it in the to put it in the uh, the apostles creed he went to be with the father he went to be with the father he is restored he is restored he is restored he like the way he foretold that's it fulfillment of the prophecy good he's going to prepare a place for us very good he's going to prepare a place for you other than paradise right no also think about this one Think about this one. In Ascension, what happens is, this God, who when he lived with us, he was bound by time and space. Um, now, everlasting. Now, this God is completely on the loose. Right? <clears throat> completely on the loose. You cannot contain this God. God is not limited to Jerusalem. God limited is not limited to the people of Israel. God can be wherever God chooses to be. That's why, you know, many of us don't go on a pilgrimage like the Hajj, looking for this God in a particular place. Wherever you call upon Him, isn't it? Anywhere you call upon God, you don't have to be this big a group even. You can be the smallest group and when you call upon God, that's what ascension does. Ascension does is something that you cannot even think of it. Because you know when you know for the for the Old Testament, God would somebody would come and come in the tabernacle. And then this tabernacle 
appeared in this Jesus. And now, he completely is out of bounds. You cannot hold God anywhere. God is all over the place. Let's keep finishing that and then I will give you a couple of questions to think about. <clears throat> uh, and is seated on the right hand of the Father. Now somebody, some, uh, uh, a woman asked the pastor, you know, uh, it looks like gee, God is sitting on the throne and on the right side that Jesus is sitting down. Uh, still it looks like Jesus is uh, one step lower than God. Is that what it is about? Does it make sense? Because uh, you know that's what uh, John and uh, James asked uh, Jesus, isn't it? Why won't one of us sit in the left and one of us sit in the right? Is that right? So it looks like uh, God is on top and then Jesus is on the side. Again, the Docetus idea was that God, Jesus is a lesser God. Jesus is not this God, but he's a lesser God, so he sits on the right side. I don't think he's talking about a physical position. It's never a physical position. It's always a position of authority. Right? Position of authority. God gives everything to Jesus. That's why when we sing that famous song, right? Uh, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Right? God in complete power and complete control. And it's given to Jesus. And then let's, let's finish that whole thing. And we'll come again to judge the living and the dead. Come again. <clears throat> it's very important what uh, in, the, in the Greek is called parousia. Where we wait where we wait for the second coming. That's why when we go to Revelation at the very end, what does it say? Come Lord Jesus. That was the prayer of the people then. And it's the prayer of the people now. That's where we get the word Maranatha. Right? Come Lord Jesus, come. Right? And so when he comes the second time, this time he will come as a judge. <clears throat> right? That's when all of the people in the staging area will come out. And then Jesus will divide them as goats and sheep. Right? Now he comes as a judge. This is the question that I want to leave and then we'll split ourselves into smaller groups. Are you concerned or comforted in the thought of Jesus' coming? We ask this question so many times in our Revelation Bible study. We ask this question several times in our Revelation Bible study. Because judgment is, uh, is a very scary term, isn't it? Yeah, judgment is a very... Listen, it's like coming there and saying, Hey, you guys all will go to heaven. You won't make it. Yeah. It's a very scary thing. Because Jesus very clearly says over and over in a parable, over and over, when he'll come, he'll, he'll, he'll separate the sheep and the, right? and the grain. Right? Then he'll separate the goat. It's, it's kind of separation. So, judgment and Jesus coming again. Is it a matter of concern for you or is it a matter of comfort? We'll talk over that and then we'll split ourselves into small groups. Those who are ready, it's Okay. Concern. What do you mean by ready, Bobby? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Somebody was ready. Somebody is prepared. Like today is not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sunil. <laughs> today is not a good day. Good day Again, it's all by His grace, right? It's yeah. And not by anything we do. That's true. Yeah. See, I think if you if you look at it, if you look at uh, the word judgment, Jesus will sit as a judge. It says. Hey, if you look at from the psalmist's perspective, if you read all of Psalm, uh, the psalmist would be in such a tight place, right? And one of all of the time he'll pray for that is, God, when you come, will you put things right? Because now I am being treated by the wicked. Now, when you come, will you stand up for me? That's what judgment is all about. Judgment is about God standing up for you. God saying to you, you are, no, I will take the side of you. So it's a very comforting term in many ways. But for some who are not in the greatest place, it will be a, a matter of concern. Okay? So that's about Jesus, folks. What we'll do is uh, we'll split ourselves into three or four groups, and I have a couple of questions to ask, and then we will talk in our small groups, and then we'll be done. We are almost 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll be done and then we'll talk a little bit and we'll close. So turn around, have a four or five in your small group and give you questions.